Welcome to another episode of John's O-Gage and H.O. Trains. Somewhere between uh, 1982 and 1993, I purchased these two Bachmann F9s and this Bachmann GP30. At least two of these came as part of a Loco and Caboose combo. This one still has the Caboose in there, unused, and it was purchased for $14.99, it looks like, at KB Toy and Hobby. So prices have gone up. Uh, in the intervening years, I dropped model railroading for about 20 years, and I recently picked it up again and found out that this F9 runs pretty good. However, the GP30 and this F9 had a disturbing clicking sound as they would run around the track. And uh, I thought it was a problem with the pancake motor inside, but uh, other YouTubers who are a lot more experienced, such as uh, SMT Mainline, and there's one, uh, the Alco guy, much more experienced at fixing these things, and the uh, wisdom out there seems to be that the clicking sound is usually caused not by a problem in the motor itself, but rather in the gears in the, the drive truck. Maybe I can somehow try to uh, borrow parts from one to at least get the other running. Now on this old F9, the one that's still working fine after these decades, uh, even that only has four wheels powered. It's the rear truck. And of those four wheels that are powered, two have traction tires, even with the two traction tires. This locomotive has a lot of trouble with a lot of wheels slipping, pulling just these five cars up this steep main line. So my objective in trying to fix one of the other engines that has the loud clicking, either the other F9 or the GP30, is maybe to put these two, uh, two working locomotives together in a consist, try to pull more than five cars up this hill. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, we'll see. And uh, you may wonder what's the reason for all the bother, being that I have more modern locomotives and some nicer new cars with knuckle couplers. Well, these old cars, some of them date back to the first ones that I bought in the 70s. The silver Swift Reefer there is uh, one of the very first I got back in the uh, maybe mid-70s, maybe 74, 75, something like that. And so there's some sentimental value there. You may wonder what the clicking sound sounds like. I shot this part of the video after working on the other locomotives. So unfortunately, I can't give you an example of that sound. Suffice it to say, it sounds like this locomotive, but with an extra clicking sound. Now, although I watched other YouTubers work on these Bachmann locomotives, I had trouble finding out how to actually remove this uh, cover off the bottom of the truck. And uh, maybe it's obvious to everyone but me, but so be it. Anyway, what you do is you just get uh, a screwdriver or something underneath this edge down here and it'll pop out. It just takes, uh, for me at least, it took a little doing. And then this will come right off. Okay, so both of these Bachmanns, the F9 and the GP30, were made in Hong Kong, but this one, the F9, it had uh, wipers, contact wipers, on the truck, and this one, the GP30, does not have any uh, wipers here to connect with the wheels. So, I don't know. Other than that, it looks pretty much the same. I did discover when I took off the housing on the bottom of the truck that the clicking sound in each of these is apparently caused by the same gear. This one, the crack, is right there on that white gear. And supposedly, according to other YouTubers, these white plastic gears are notorious for failing. Maybe I can substitute one of these other gears that's not cracked. It looks identical. 
if I can substitute it, maybe at least I can get one of these engines, maybe the GP9 running. Well, I took uh, this gear here uh, that was cracked off of the GP30 and I replaced it with another gear that looked identical, it's a, in a different position, it's the one from here on the F9, but uh, it was not cracked. So it's now taken from the F9 and placed here on the GP30, put a little gear lube and uh, a little oil on the axles and we're going to put the cover back on and put it back together and then we'll see if we can get that going. So I reassembled the truck and uh, attached a coupler to the rear of the engine and we'll just try it out see if it runs without that clicking sound that I had before. I should say runs at all. Not bad. Yeah, I'd say this would have to come under the ranks of the pitiful pullers. I just piled some extra weights on top, and sadly, it still really doesn't pull. has a lot of trouble. I had this, I bought this engine new, and probably around 1993, and I don't remember how well it pulled back then. The old GP30 pulls uh, quite a bit less than this old F9 and one reason I think might be that because of the body style they were able to put a lot more weight in this F9 and it's something like about 14 ounces whereas this GP30 not only because of the body style are they limited but they didn't squeeze in as much weight as they could and that is only about something like maybe 10 and a half ounces. So just sheer weight alone, it was only four wheels driven. And I think that could have some difference in the ability to pull. So because the GP30 is a very poor puller, and uh, it has only four wheels that are powered, two of them with traction tires, I just wondered, I've got this other uh, F9, and because I borrowed one of the gears from it, um, that is not going to run, so I thought, what if I borrow uh, one of its, uh, or its only traction tire wheel set that has a gear, and swap it out for the one without traction tires on the GP30. And I'm not losing any pickups because this GP30 does not have any uh, pickups on the power truck, unlike F9. So let's pull out the non-traction tire wheel set. Now to my untrained eyes it looks like it's pretty much identical. It looks like it's got the same gear in the same location. So I'm going to try it out. It's an experiment. While I'm at it this really doesn't have a lot of weight on it so I'm just adding some little bits of hardware there. Some weights from another engine and uh, a bolt there and just gluing them in place and it's only going to add another maybe an ounce or two. Bachman molded into the end of this body F9 and into this one GP30 covers back on the truck. I'm going to test it out and see first of all if this does run and see if it's got any uh, improved pulling power. So it's back on the track and now that it's got four traction tires, still just one truck powered, but I've connected it to five of the cars. And before it had trouble just pulling a couple, slipping all the way, and it is much better now. So now we're back in a real world situation on the layout with sharp curves and very steep hills. So now the GP30 has four traction tires and uh, this could barely pull two cars on 
level track before, so see how it does. Well, a lot of wheel spinning, but it is just barely pulling the five cars that the F9 pulled. Because of the body style on the GP30, you can't fit as much weight in, and I just put in a little weight added. My objective though is to see how it would run with the F9, see if we could pull more than five cars up the hill. So I'm gonna try that now. So I've got these two engines in a consist together now, and I added on a couple cars. So we've got eight cars pulling now. And up this long steep hill, still a lot of wheel spinning. You can make it, not great pullers, but again, better than it was before. And in case you notice, that is a twist tie between the two engines, semi-permanently coupling them together because I was having trouble with the coupler. These old horn hook couplers aren't always doing a real good job. So I'd say this is uh, somewhat of a success because it's better than it was before. And I've got two engines running now. So with that, I think I'll end this video. Say thanks for watching another episode of John's O-Gage and HO Trains. And we'll see you next time.